Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fudge Nugget Kingdom. My name is Genesis9876 and welcome back to Apollo Justice Appeal to Truth. Oh my god, it feels good saying that again. In the last episode, we completed the first trial of this second case, which was honestly really fun. We got to cross-examine good old grumpy Mr. Season, and we also got to cross-examine the good old conductor, Princeton Rails. Even though he had only one testimony, so he was kind of over quick, but still, it was a lot of fun. But I won't keep you too long on the startup screen because we're about to start the investigation right now, so let's go ahead and get right back into it. June 2nd, 1107 AM, Fay Law Offices. Apparently I forgot how to continue text. There we go. That trial took more out of me than I thought it would. It's nice to have a little break. I wouldn't mind relaxing for a bit longer. You know, knowing my luck, now that I said it... Three... Two... One. Hey, Paulo, guess who's. <laughs> Apollo's got the timing down pat already. Called it. Called what? Hey there, pal. Hey, Gumshoe, my man. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention we also cross examined Gumshoe in the last episode, which is a treat. I love his new personality in this game. I mean, I, I love old Gumshoe, of course, but I, I like this guy. He's not that different from his old self, but I mean. Considering the fact that he's rich now, that, that's a pretty big difference. Like a very big difference. I was told you two needed a ride out to the village, so here I am. We're all ready for the investigation of you are, Paulo. Ho <laughs> well, don't get too excited, pal. The police have full authority to check out the crime scene before you do. And we've got the power off now. Bah, fine, we'll stay away from the train until you're done. But there's still stuff we want to investigate, right, Paulo? Yeah, I guess there's a few things we could look into while we wait. That's okay, right, Gumshoe? Detective Gumshoe? This place really hasn't changed a bit, has it? Oh! Gumshoe's been here before. Yet Maya hasn't. That's interesting. Uh, y yeah, I guess it hasn't. A anyway, we've got business to get down to. Too, don't or maybe Maya has been here. I'm very confused as to the nature of this alternate universe Very very confused You're right. Yeah, you're right. It's gonna be a long drive Normally I take Sebastian out to the crime scene, but he's trying to figure out a motive for Pearly around now He's gonna be going through old records for a while. Oh Yeah, that does doesn't sound like a fun job. I doubt it'll be easy for him to find any reason she'd kill the victim. He's not happy about it either. You should have seen him when we got it out of the courtroom, pal. He tries to be all professional in court, but once we were outside that room... What? What is it? Oh! Alright, well, time to write my will. I'd like to thank everyone who was alongside me. I'd like to thank Maya and Gumshoe and, and Clay and Andrea earlier, because I'm surely going to die by this visor boy right about now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are screwed. <laughs> Hi, Godot. How's it going? Ah! What do we have here? Um, hi there. How's it going? <laughs> Please don't kill me. Kid, I thought I made it pretty clear that I didn't want you involved in that case. You went behind my back and took it anyway, huh? Was I not clear enough for you? H hey! You. You stay out of this, ma'am. Paulo? I know why you're doing something so stupid, kid. You've been fixing to leave here, haven't you? You're a little off the market, though. You didn't care about the risk involved. Because you're just about ready to run off like all the other upstarts I hired. Oh. My god, the ego of this man. I punched my microphone. I, I didn't intend for it to end up like this. Sure, I was thinking about quitting, but I wanted to at least give you one more chance. I thought... I thought you might care about this case. We could take it together and maybe... Maybe it would... Fix things. Is that what you want to say? You thought you should go sticking your nose where it shouldn't be. Because it somehow magically fixed things. You really are as stupid as they come, aren't you? I, I just want to understand! Why hire me in the first place? All you've done is assign me busy work for months. I learned more about how to brew your favorite blends of coffee from you than the law. Why even take on an apprentice if you're not going to do anything? 
You want to know why? Is that it? Uh, of course I do! All I need is one good defense attorney. Just one defense attorney who's actually worth passing this office on to, so I can get this all over with. But you're not the one, and none of the others were either. I just need one half-decent upstart. Is that too much to ask for? W what do you even mean by a good defense attorney? You, you decided whether I was good enough before you even saw me in the courtroom, didn't you? You're never going to find anyone if, if you... I don't want to hear it. You've overstepped your role. I made it very clear that you should have stayed away from this fey business, and what did you do? You're worthless to me. Oh my god, the, the, the concacity of this man is making my blood boil. I should have fired you a long time ago. Get out. I... I w you wanted to quit anyway, didn't you? I'm getting tired of having a childish, smart-mouthed greenhorn around the office anyway. I can find another fledgling lawyer to take your place. There's nothing special about you. You don't deserve to work here. Who does, then? Is that Mia? That is Mia, isn't it? Oh, yeah, okay. My apologies for intruding, sir. Your standards just seem a little high to me, that's all. But I suppose it's not my place to say, is it? <laughs> now then, Mr. Justice, you're not wanted here, are you? I have a feeling Mia recognizes Godot. I'm, uh... Let's get investigating then, why don't we? Uh, I'll go start the car. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Gumshoe being caught in all this. Come on, Apollo. S sir Get moving. All right. Well, that could have went better, but hey, at least I still have all my bones intact. June 2nd, 1.09 p.m. Korean train station. June 2nd, 1.09 p.m. Korean train station. Um, we're here. You guys all right? Uh, yeah, we're fine, detective. No biggie, I just got fired. Okay, then. I'm gonna head over to the crime scene, all right? I'll come tip you off when you can be allowed in. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. S see you later, pal. Uh... So... I knew him. Yeah, I figured, Mia. Oh, G Godot, you mean? Yes. I think there's a lot we both want to know. Yeah, we should talk. All right, yep, let's have a good old-fashioned conversation about this. Godot. I heard a good bit of what you said at the office. Maya caught on to what was going on pretty quickly. I'm sorry, I probably should have stepped in, it in a bit sooner. No, it's alright. It's a lot to take in. I mean, I don't think I'd ever get used to being suddenly channeled out of the blue. I bet it'd be quite jarring. Well, I've gotten a little bit used to it by now. Did you, um, mean it? Huh? He hasn't been the best mentor to you, has he? Oh, well, not really. At all. I mean, he hasn't really done anything actively bad in hiring me. He hasn't tried to mislead me or feed me false information or bad strategies. It's more just apathy than anything. He has never docked my pay or even alluded to giving me some sort of punishment until, well, these last few days. Yeah. And what did they say about him in the courtroom? Well, he's one of the most renowned lawyers this side of the country. I mean, before I got hired, I heard some seedy rumors about him. But I heard similar things about his com competition. And the major cases he's won are extraordinary, to be honest. I read the case transcripts before I'd even worked with him. But smaller cases... How do I put it? He doesn't like anyone getting it in his way, no matter who they are. I, I know we're supposed to seek the truth, but... Well, what I saw the other day was... Kinda callous? Maybe that's putting it lightly? I think it had to be done, but there must have been a better way to handle it. I see. Thank you. And, um, who is he to you? I never knew him as Godot. He was a fellow defense attorney, Diego Armando. Ah, okay, they kept this part of the main universe, at least. Diego Armando. Diego Armando, I don't think I've ever heard that name. I knew him from the start of my career. We worked at the same law office. But still, I only knew him for a few months. And here he is, with my office working under my family's name. There's gotta be more to it than that. You're right, I apologize. Me and Diego were, well, dating for a short while. 
That explains, uh, a little? To be honest, I thought he was just some flowery-tongued hotshot when we first met. A bit too self-absorbed, if you'd ask me. But then he was beside me for my first trial, and how it ended. Yeah, that trial didn't end very well, did it? I, I thought I'd quit being a lawyer t altogether. But we did a follow-up investigation together. The Diego I knew wouldn't let me give up. We were going to see justice through no matter what. I used to think his smile was so obnoxiously smug, but then it became encouraging. I guess I grew fond of it. I'm not sure where my career would have led if I was left to deal with the, that aftermath of the trial alone. And then... You died? No. He was chasing the culprit from my first case, and she poisoned him. He went to comatose for years. And he still was the day I died. I guess he woke up. I don't fully know what happened to him after that. Haha, <laughs> look at me. I'm sorry, you probably don't care about the reminiscing of a dead woman. Besides, I have no idea who that man is now. No, it's good to get a bit of context, at least. But I think my chances of staying at that office are already ruined. Maybe if he'd taken the case alongside me, things would be different. Don't burden yourself with it, Apollo. I... I don't know enough to tell you why he's being so uncooperative. But if you genuinely think it's better for you to move on from that office, then you should. Just make sure it's your choice. What I've told you here today shouldn't matter. Act off your own experience. If you still want to quit, I'll try to help you out after this case. Okay. Well, I think that covers most of what we know. Yeah, but besides there'll be time for this later if we need to talk more. We've got an investigation to get to. Um, are you okay if I stick around a little bit longer? I have a lot to process. Fair enough. Oh, of course, I don't mind. Besides, I'm sure you're just as good at investigating as your sister is. Probably better. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Well, we can't check out the crime scene right now, so we should probably start by following up with today's witnesses. And I know who's easiest to find. Okay, I'm starting to mind a bit more. <laughs> Apollo really doesn't want to see Mr. Season. I'll try to do what I can to keep him in line. Alright, let us head over to the seasonal herbary so we can talk to our good old grumpy pants. June 2nd, 1.21pm, seasonal herbary. Well, let's get the worst part of the investigation out of the way. <sighs> Hello there, Mr. Season. Oh, Mia darling, it's good to see you. <sighs> How many times is he going to keep sighing? Uh, if you don't mind, we're here to ask some follow-up questions about, well, about my testimony earlier, I know. <sighs> you know, it's really obvious you're doing that on purpose. Can't you show an old man just a little pity boy? Uh... Just a little. Mr. Season, can we please put this aside and get to the questions? Oh, Mia darling, you're so cruel. Back from the grave to visit us, and yet so, so cold to old Mr. Season. They're fine. Ask away. Alright, let's talk. Today's trial. Er, uh, about today. I, uh, um, might have messed up a little bit. A lot. A lot, Mr. Season. A little bit? But I kinda helped at the end, right? Will it be easy if we maintain the illusion? For sure. Uh, yeah! We've got an opportunity now! And, uh, someone definitely set Pearl up, so... So that means I could've seen him if I stayed awake. And they might've never taken away our sweet Pearly. Um, well that's not your fault, right? You're not responsible for your old age. I know, dear. But still... Someone set up early, I'm sure of it. And I could have caught them. It's not your job to catch the culprit, Mr. Season. I can't just leave it all up to courts. Why does the courtroom sp spell anything but despair for us, huh? Please, just leave it in our hands. You should have left it to us from the beginning. Don't you trust me? I... I didn't mean it like that, dear. But now Pearlie's in even deeper trouble. And if you fail her and Mia... Uh, I'm sorry. I just want to repay your family. Her family? You don't know much, do you, dear? The Fay family. Is everyone in the clan this, uh, devoted to the main family? Oh, dear. Maybe a few years back, but now, not really. But Maya's turning that around, lad, so there's no need to pry. 
that the clan's going to return to its former glory. I'm gonna see it before I die. So it's nothing to worry over, really. You say that, but... The prosecution is looking for a potential motive for Pearl right now. And we're going to need a motive ourselves if there's anyone else connected to this. It's not going to help me to save her if I'm kept in the dark about this. Yes, yes, I suppose so. Please refrain from ranting. Eh? I, I wasn't planning on it. If you say so. I, uh, I tried catching you up some the last time. You were mostly rambling about how terrible the city and the courts were. It was just a little hard to focus on the whole ruining the clan stuff. Heh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, you see, after Maya's mother was disgraced and left the clan kinda... fell apart. I always believed in Misty in the main line, but I guess I was a little biased. I wasn't supposed to take over the Herbery way back then. Men are too likely to up and leave the clan. And making salves and incense used to be incredibly important to Karain tradition. It's not as important anymore as how modernized everything is. But I was still proud when I was given this place. And Misty, uh, that Maya's mother, she stood by me. Even after the village objected to me being given this role. The least I could do was try to help her family. Even if the clan didn't like that much either. But some people don't see the main family like I do. There's always been infighting, sure, but when Misty left, we lost our livelihood. Our families fell apart. More than ever, members of the F Branch family hated her. But thankfully she was gone, so nothing ever came to a head. But that's the thing. If there's one person who could have helped the clan, uh, realize their discontent, to put it nicely. It would have been Pearly. Pearl? Only her and Maya have enough power to channel spirits. So she was their only hope if she wanted if they wanted to overthrow the main family. I see. But like I said, that's dying down now thanks to Maya's leadership. The girl is working herself to death for us. <laughs> Do you know if anyone in the village still holds a grudge against us? Way back when I could have told you. I uh, but people aren't very vocal about it anymore. I'm not sure who still genuinely feels that way. Well, it's good to know regardless. Uh, oh, you think so? Alright, asleep. Mr. Season, when the train was coming into the station, don't make me say it again. I fell asleep right when it was most important. I'm old and useless, okay? We're moving on. N no, no, wait, that's not what I'm getting at. Can you tell me more about before you went to sleep? What? It's a little too convenient, isn't it? You pass out at the very day of the incident, right around the time something could have happened. So it might not be on me? Are we talking about, like, a sleeping agent or something? It's a possibility. Worth it to check, at least. Uh, alright, let me think. Maybe it was in the tea? I would imagine it could have been in the tea, because he didn't he, ha he say he has afternoon tea in the testimony? That was the tea! Could it have been the tea? Exactly! That'd be my first choice. You have a routine, don't you? Yes, yes! A few hours before sunset, I start boiling the water and gathering the ingredients. What sort of tea did you have that day? Just the usual lavender. Is it strongly flavored? I I'm sure I would have noticed if something else was in it, if that's what you're getting at. I normally set my tea by the window and leave it to cool. And you do this every day? Well, usually, yes. I think that warrants taking a closer look, then. For sure. Alright, sounds good. So, I'm guessing we have to examine the teapot in the back of the room. Is this where you put the tea set you used yesterday? Mm-hmm, yes. H hold on a second, I've been so caught up with everything I haven't even had the time to do the dishes, so... Here, this is the cup I drank from that day. And you haven't washed it? Is it helpful? This could be great! R really We should pass this off to the detective later, he'll be able to test it for us. Are you sure that's a good idea? I know Maya trusts that detective, but well... It'll be fine, Mr. Season. Teacup out of the court record. But even if we know for sure someone snuck sedatives in the cup, there'll still be the question of how they got there. Let's look a little more. Uh... Where do we look now? Because I examined the teapot, right? Yeah, I already did that. Do we check the windowsill? Do you always put your tea by this window here? Yes, almost always. But it's not like I leave it open or anything. The window stays closed while I leave the tea out to cool. 
I only open it when I'm drinking the tea itself, and even then the window only opens from the inside. But I don't, I don't see any other way it could have been done. Did he really just fall asleep? We can't just leave it there, it's too convenient. Hold on, let me at least take a look from outside. Ah, good idea! <clears throat> of course it is! That's Mia for you! Do you still have yesterday's teapot? I can go get it for you! Can you put it where you normally would? Of course! <laughs> Replicating the crime scene, are we? Are you ready, Apollo? Yeah, see if you can open it. There's no latch or anything. I, I don't know how she'd do it. Ah! What is it? Ah! The window frame! Is it moving on that side too? Yeah! Hey! Hey! It's gonna come apart! You can't just mess with stuff, Mia! This is an old house! It's gonna break off! Let's see... Click! Ah! She managed to create an opening! Miss Faye, can you reach the teapot from there? Yeah, I think I can. Hold on, I'm coming back. Wait, my window! Click! It fell right back into place. Th thank goodness. Apollo, look at these. Screws? They're way longer than they need to be to secure a window of all things. I found them jammed into the frame. And you were able to move the whole window pane with them out? There was just enough space for my hand to reach through the teapot. That proves it then. Screws out of the court record. Wait, does this mean there's no screws in the frame now? I don't think these are the right type of screws anyway. It should hold up for a little while, the rest of the screws are in just not the bottom ones. Oh, okay, I'll just replace it later, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Season. Yeah, we actually got a good few leads. <laughs> no, no, I didn't do anything. You two should get going. I doubt I can be of much more help. Just do your best for me, okay? Of course. I, um... Should I say anything? You too, boy. Alright, I won't let you down. Aw, that's actually sweet. Okay, now now he actually has faith in us. I'm happy for that. You better not. Alright, since we have nowhere else to go, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to go back to the crying station. Yep. June 2nd, 1.21pm, crying train station. Looks like Gumshoe's not done checking out the crime scene. Still? Well, that doesn't mean there's nothing to do, does it? After all, nobody's watching the outside of the train now, are they? Let's check it out. Uh, what do we do with the outside of the train, though? Do we check out the... the beam? Ah, we can get down close to the tracks safely enough. Let's look through the rubble. Wh what Hey, be careful! Aw, oh, it'll be okay, Apollo. The power's off. Come help me. Uh, alright. Uh, hold on. Nothing to be afraid of. You're fine. You got this. Let's see... Th there's something here! Another screw? Two? Th they match! And they're both tiny! Look at the screws that bolt down the support- oh- oh. <clears throat> what is it, Apollo? The screws that bolt the other support beam down! Look just like these ones! D do you think our two sets of screws were swapped? If they are, that's proof that someone set this up. R right, this is exactly what we need! Screw set out of the court record, alright? What do we have here? I don't know who that is. I it's alright, Apollo, no need to be so jumpy. You don't have to point it out! Oh, alright, it's the, it's the conductor, man. Now I'm actually not sure whether this guy's the culprit, but... I don't know who else it could be. Maybe Perun? I don't know. I feel like Perun, though she hasn't actually testified yet, has she? She said she had a count, or she said she had an account of what happened, but she didn't really testify, did she? So maybe it could be Perun? I don't know. Something about her character just makes me feel like her being the culprit just doesn't seem right. I don't know what it is, but something about it. I could be wrong though, I could be very wrong. There's definitely a possibility she sh she could be the culprit. Ha <laughs> ha! He's right, you know. No need to embarrass the men. You're making it worse. What are you even doing here? Waiting to get back on my train, of course. It was a little hard to ignore you two, digging your way through the rubble after all. Isn't that sort of thing a detective's job? Nothing wrong with doing our own investigation, is there? Hm. As long as you don't make out to be a liar again. I'm sorry, but with the evidence we had- Oh, come on now. Don't bring it up again. Being made a fool once was enough. You're the one who brought it up again anyway. Um, sorry about that. 
Would it be wrong for us to ask a few questions? Huh? I think understanding the schematics of the train and the station a bit could help our case, Mr. Rails. If my cooperation keeps suspicion off me, then who am I to decline? Alright. Lay it on me, my guy. Mr. Rails, how much would have to be done to this beam in order for it to collapse the way it did? Ah, uh, is that what you were looking at? Well, the station isn't in peak condition, so less than usual, I'd suppose. What's the first step you'd take in order to get it to collapse? Well, I'd... Wait, is this some sort of trick? Are you going to suspect me if I say something that lines up with what you just found? Some somebody's paranoid. How about we answer the question for you instead? Ah, uh, great idea, dear. Alright then, can you take a look at these screws? These are used to secure the beams, aren't they? Bingo! If you want to mess with the beam, the first thing you do is remove those screws. And we found these in Mr. Season's house. Two are still in the crash beam at the bottom here, though. Yes, there's usually four per beam. I guess whoever it was manipulated the beam so it would fall directly on the train. If they removed the screws on the side close to the station instead of the railway, then the beam would fall towards the train as it came into the station, right? Mr. Rails, how much more would have to be done in order to ensure the beam fell? And how loud would it be? Would it be loud enough to wake the sleeping old man, you mean? Uh, yeah. Well, with the screws out, it would probably be a matter of taking a crowbar to the base and uprooting what you could from there. You know how far away the station is from this man's house. You'd have to be careful, but I'd say it could feasibly be done while keeping the man asleep. With a bit of luck, that is. Assuming he's a heavy sleeper, he does look the type. With how little attention the station has received, it's risky, but it's possible. I see. That doesn't sit well with me. If someone really went as far as to plan this murder, would they gamble it, it all on a risk? So someone... So someone staged the entire crash? Huh. Do you have any record of who boarded the train that day? Were there any other passengers who got off at an earlier station? Quite a few, yes. Here, we collected the train tickets of everyone who rode that day. Why does the color scheme look like it belongs in Amori? Will these help you? That'd be great! Make sure to thank me first. Uh, I think I'm supposed to say thank you after I get them. Ah, uh, thank you. There we go. Alright, my man. <laughs> At least we have a record of everyone who was on the train now. That should narrow things down, right? Do you remember all of the passengers that day yourself, Mr. Rails? Mm-hmm, I'm afraid not. There were about 20 or so, but most of them left at earlier stations. Maybe if I saw a face, I saw them all briefly before the train started moving. Right, I'll keep that in mind. So, are you happy? Huh? Have I been cooperative enough for you, lad? Did you get the information you wanted from me yet? Oh, well, if you're offering, um... Hmm... Is there anything else about the train I should ask about? Are they gonna give me... Oh, I need to present something. Should I ask about the dagger again? Ooh, what's this? It's not for you. I know, I know. You want my input on it, don't you? Hmm. Well, I don't have anything good to say about it. Did you really have to lead me on like that? Come on, it was just good fun. Okay, apparently not. Oh, the strap hanger. What about it? It's quite a strange design. Yeah, it seems strange that it can stretch down so far. It does that so even small kids can reach it, right? Yes, it's a byproduct of how we receive the material, I'm afraid. We wanted them coated in rubber for safety purposes, as the other day demonstrated. But the manufacturer used that as an excuse to skimp out on the fabric itself. Under the coat of rubber is what I'd wager to be some of the cheapest fabric in the world. When the designers tried to cut it up into the smaller pieces for each of the different cars, well... The fabric frayed and unraveled in places. So we took measures to ensure we cut it as little as possible. So that's why it extends down so far? Yes, exactly. It worked out in the end, I suppose. We were able to make it look like we were thinking of the children. Quite good for our reputation, don't you agree? I have a feeling that's an illusion you should keep maintaining to the public at large. Including me. Agreed. Ah, we're back on the crash again, I see. Are there any details that you think we're missing out on? Hmm, I think we covered most of them at the trial. The blackout lasted for six minutes, I turned on the power and found the defendant. And once she was with me in front, I turned the power back off to preserve the scene. Simple enough, right? 
Is there anything else that would have been deactivated not mentioned in the report? Hmm. The lights and the doors between the cars. That seems right. I guess there are a few things on my end that aren't listed here. For instance, once the power's out, there's no way to get the engine started. And anything I control from the locomotive is, is kind of set. Like the door out of the train, for instance. The ones with the tween cars open automatically. But it's up to me to open the way out when we arrive at a station. They were closed when we crashed, so the only way I could turn them on back on would require power. Had they been open when the crash occurred, they would have been stuck like that, and vice versa. And you made two announcements over the intercom that day, right? Yes, one before and after I found your client. Alright, thank you. No problem, dear. Oh, there we go. Okay, it was a crash report I had to present. Alright, pal, we're, we're all done. Oh, Gumshoe! Finally! You want back in the locomotive car, pal? Yes, please. Alright, I'll see you over. I'll be at the crime scene when you two want to talk, okay? Don't keep me waiting. I've got to talk to that one witness in the village. We'll, there, we'll be there soon, detective. Alright, let's get moving. Was... Was he referring to... Was he referring to Mr. Season? Ta-ta! You know, I should probably get going, too. I'm sure Maya will be pretty mad at me if I take up all of today's investigation. She seemed to be having a good time yesterday. I'm sure you've been around her enough to know the earful I'll be getting if she doesn't get her way. Yeah, I can imagine. To be fair, you won't actually get an earful unless you talk to her through Pearl. Yeah, I can imagine. Heh, <laughs> keep a good eye on her. She's not as much of an open book as she lets on. I I'll try. This was nice. Thank you. Oh, it was nothing. You were more of a help to me than I was to you, anyway. Is that right? Heh, <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk more later. Goodbye, Apollo. Oh, how's it going, Maya? Mm. How long did that last? I'm kind of tired. Huh? We're at the village. Oh, right. The last thing you remember is probably... Did you guys investigate without me? Wait, what happened with your boss? It's okay. It's fine. I just got fired. Your sister just wanted some time to process us all. Ooh, that means she knew him, right? She knew. Yeah, um... Catch me up. I need to know everything. Uh, all right. I caught my up on everything that happened. What? This is X comatose. I I would have never. And how come you and Mia get to make all the good progress? S sorry, it wasn't my idea for her to stick around. I know, I know. That's fair enough, I guess. But if you think about it, I just gave up a few hours of my life for her. She should ask permission first. Well, take it up with her next time you can see her. And by next time, you mean when we get Pearly out of detention, right? Yeah, we've got evidence behind us now. We can do this. Heh, <laughs> there's the confidence you were missing. So where are we going next? Gumshoe is ready for us now, right? Yeah, but he also mentioned that he a witness to question somewhere in the village. Ah, uh, the village. I can show you around. And it's probably a good, a good idea for us to get to the witness before he does. Well, look at you. You got us two different leads to follow. We'll make an investigator of you yet. I mean, it was more luck than anything. Ooh, so modest. Come on, Paolo, where are we going to see? Lead the way. Uh, considering that we have to get to the uh, witness before Gumshoe, I'd say that the village is the more pressing thing. June 2nd, 2.11 p.m., Crying Village. Oh, and my manor's over there, look. Huh, it's not as big as I would have thought. Huh, to you, bud. Seriously, what's with the far-off look? Did you not think my village was cool? No, no, it's cool, I promise. It's just, uh, a lot to take in. That's it. And a weird kind of nostalgic. Anyway, I've had enough of the tour. Should we get back to the investigation? Oh, right, duh, we were looking for a witness. Who do you think it is, Paulo? Well, the only person unaccounted for today has been Miss Shears. Yeah, okay, it, it's probably Miss Shears then. Perun, I didn't see her while I was showing you around. Hey, can you, like, shout her name for me? That's, uh, kind of embarrassing. Come on, if I do it, the whole village won't let me live it down for weeks. You don't live here. Do it for me. I'd rather them talk about Maya's weird lawyer friend who saved Pearly than Maya being immature again. I'll, all right, uh, I guess I'll do it. Oh. Miss Shears! Miss Shears, are you here? Whoa, you've got some pipes! Oh my god, it actually worked!
I'm here, dear. I'm here. There's no need to be so loud. Thank goodness. Hey, Perun. We heard a certain detective was planning on catching up with you later today. Mind if we ask you a few questions first? Oh, why not? There's nothing better to do. Uh, I wish the trial didn't have to take up so much of my time. My dear flowers are waiting back at home, you know. The poor things, they'll start withering if I have to neglect them any longer. They need to be taken care of. Well, blame the prosecution, not us. Fair enough, sweetie. So what about your testimony? We didn't see you in court today, did we? No, Mr. Season was too cooperative, I'm afraid. It's almost as if he interrupted the whole trial with his testimony. The cute prosecutor boy said I'll be up first tomorrow, though, to make up for keeping me here an extra day. You'll be able to handle my testimony right, my dear. Well, we already have a good idea about what it's about, given what you told us yesterday. Its main focus is the victim's actions, right? It doesn't benefit him as much that he has to argue Pearl's motive, though. Right, it makes no sense for the victim to talk to Pearl privately if it was Pearl who planned anything. I imagine that's why the detective is so keen on questioning me today. Well, he's wasting his time, then, because Pearlie has no motive. Heh, you really care for that girl, don't you? Yeah, duh. Flowers only bloom with enough love and care, and I guess there's only for you to provide it now, huh? There's just neglect for her if you fail, after all. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, no need to bring that up. Right, right, sorry. Don't be upset, Mia, darling. I'm fine, thank you very much. You know, I've been thinking. Your testimony revolves around the victim's actions, but we still don't know much about her herself. All right. I can tell you about her life in the village. And you can tell us about what she was doing on the train, Perun. Hm. All right, love, if it pleases the boy. Can you please not call me boy? All right, I'll if not. I'm afraid I wasn't exactly keeping my eye on the victim that day. There were quite a few passengers on board when the train initially departed. I wasn't paying attention to the anyone in particular. I think she made a bit of conversation with Pearl on the way, but you know how the girl can be. Poor thing's not much of a talker. You really need to work on that with her, Miss Bay. No good for someone so far up in the hierarchy. R right She was trying to channel some of her family members that day, right, Mia? Yeah, Olive's just a few years older than me. Her family split apart when the clan lost its reputation. I wonder if she found out anything about them. Do you think that might have influenced what she did that day? It sounds like a possibility, dear. Huh. Maya, remember what I pointed out in the detention center the other day? Oh, right! The whole thing about us only having 30 minutes in the city? That'd have to be true for her, too, huh? I wonder if she had enough time to investigate her family. Miss Shears, did you notice anything about the victim's disp disposition that day? Hmm. She looked a little... How do I put it? Nervous. Yes, I think she was nervous. Maybe she really had discovered something about her family that day. After the incident. One last question if it's alright, Miss Shears. Alright, I suppose I can answer, but you're starting to nag me a bit, dear. Uh, sorry? Go on, just get it over with. Your testimony is going to focus on what happened before the incident. Can we get a chance to hear your perspective on after? There's not much to tell, I'm afraid. Like I said, we were pulling into the station, so I went into the cargo car, car to check on my shipment. I had a big crate of dried flowers and herbs prepared for Mr. Season. I wanted to get ready to unload as we pulled into the station, and then, well... The power went out and you were trapped? Whew, you're a clever one. How adorable. Please don't. Right, right. I was too busy making sure the impact didn't destroy my shipment. So I didn't get out before the power was shut off again. The police were already over the train by the time I could leave. So there were, are no new leads after all. Sorry, dear. I don't have any more to tell. Maybe you'll find something out at the trial. Well, thanks, Perun. We should get going. Tell that to detective to hurry up if we see him, dear. Eh, we'll think about it. <laughs> Alright, that's enough from Miss Perun. Um... I still got my eye on her, but I don't know. My eye is still on Princeton Rails. For now, anyway. June 2nd, 2.50 a.m., passenger car one. Ah, oh, there you are, Gumshoe. There you are, pal. Oh, Maya, welcome back. Hey, yo, detective. 
Did your investigation find anything now that the power's off? Not much, I'm afraid. At least the crime scene is a whole lot safer. Nothing to be said about Gumshoe. We don't want the prosecution to pick up on too many leads, after all. Well, I'd rather not show up empty-handed. Alright, let's talk. Me and Paulo found a few good leads, actually. Well, at least someone's made good progress. But I bet you're still just as stumped as we are about how anyone else could have gotten here. Yeah, we'll probably need to find a third party to help Pearly. Have the leads you guys found given you any ideas? If anything, we found proof that someone set this up outside the train, not in it. Come on, guys, that's not what I want to hear. This case is serious now. Hey, we're doing our best here. I don't need comments from you, Gumshoe. Calm down, we'll, we'll figure this out. Maybe there's a way inside the train. After it's broken down. It'll be alright, pal. Mm, now you're all babying me. Let's, uh, stay focused on the current- uh, the case. Y yeah there has to be some sort of trick to this whole thing, right? Except any other answer. Are you sure it was impossible for people to get through the doors? Yeah, pal, we even checked to see if they might have been tampered with. There's not so much as a scratch on them. What about this? Here! Huh? This diagram, it shows us there's an emergency exit up here. The prosecution already thought of that, pal. There's no way anyone could reach that thing from inside the car. It's too high up. And it's pretty much impossible to get on top of a train, especially one pulling into the station. Especially if they didn't want to be seen or heard. Ugh, isn't it at least worth checking out? I, I guess? Alright, you've enabled me. I'm gonna see how it works. Well, how? I'm gonna jump. Lift me up, okay? Here I come. Well, wait a second. Gotcha, pal. Whoa, that was easy. I could practically do it with one hand. Uh, can you put me down now, detective? Right, sorry, pal. D don't look at us like that. <laughs> what did I just witness? <laughs> the true trauma that investigations can instill. I, I think we broke him, pal. <laughs> but Paulo, but please don't do something like that again. Okay, fine, fine, it wasn't that weird. <laughs> but geez, that thing opened up pretty easily. <laughs> well, yeah, if there was a serious emergency, you wouldn't want anyone to get stuck. Gumshoe, are there any other emergency exits on this train? I don't think so, pal. Okay, so maybe there isn't a way to get in? Then how would it work? Unless someone was... Uh, unless there were maybe two culprits? So maybe... Maybe... Maybe rails and shears work together. I don't know, I I'm just spitballing at this point. I'm not the engineer, but it looks like it's mostly the top ones. Aren't they usually on windows? I don't see any that are marked. And since the rails themselves have an electric current running through them, well, I could see why it's not the best idea. Hmm, there's gotta be something we're missing. I'll ask about it before I wrap up here, how about that? That'd be great. Pearl's motive. Any idea how Sebastian is doing? I haven't heard from him since I got here, but I'm not surprised. He won't be happy until he finds a suitable motive. Well, he's not gonna find one. He won't even know the first place to look. About that, pal. I, uh, might have given him a bit of a lead. A lead? G gumshoe you didn't. Yeah, I told him, pal. T told him what? Wait, huh? What happened? What happened? What happened? Maya? Go ahead. You see, uh, Pearly, she's been through a lot. A long time ago, her mother, uh, oh, okay, all right. We're taking a trip to the past, boys. How do I even say this? She tried to set her up to kill Maya. What? I, I thought it was made pretty clear there's a lot of internal conflict here. Yeah, but I wasn't given any examples. I didn't think it involved murder. That's, that's just sick. It's a lot more real when you hear it about, about it like this, huh? B but everything turned out okay. Pearl loves Maya, pal. They never hurt each other. W what happened then? Uh, there was a place up in the mountains where the plan was set to take place. Both those two were too young to go at the time. And by the time Maya was old enough, they just couldn't get a reservation. They said something about scheduling issues. I'm not sure about that. They were on the wait list for months. Pearly was so desperate to please her mother, she'd gone on about how it was her mo mom's last wish. She's, uh, tried to go up there herself, nearly gave us a heart attack. 
Maya called me in the middle of the night and we put two and two together. We got lucky. I found her on her way there, poor thing. It was the middle of the night. I took her to my apartment, called Maya. When she got there, Pearl explained everything. Well, after all the crying and apologizing, that is. She even had instructions from her mother on that on her that day. She was only little at the time. She didn't know any better. But then why bring this up to prosecutor to best? It sounds like this is something better left unspoken. There's still a few mysteries around the case, pal. It's all to do with the instructions that were laid out for her. She said she found them in the village, but her mother was jailed for another crime at the time. We have no idea how they got there. Those instructions, Pearl said she found them unsealed. Besides, evidence of her involvement in the clan's power struggles she could probably lead to something as well. I, I guess it could make some sort of motive. S sorry, Maya. I get why, but... Pearly... It's okay, I told Sebastian not to go into too much detail. Here, pal. I figured you'd need this. Incident report out of the court record. Thank you, detective. I'll make sure it's filed away as soon as the case is over, alright, Maya? Y yeah that'll help. Try not to bring it up around Pearl much. She's still... well... I understand. Ah... Huh. So obviously they were talking about Bridge to the Turnabout and what happened there. That's so cool! Okay, so, so... Bridge to the Turnabout definitely happened differently. Because the whole plan never ended up happening. Uh, so... That means Misty never ended up dead, so Misty's still alive. Maya's mother is still alive. That's crazy. Yo, I like how this AU is slowly setting up what exactly changed between this universe and the main universe. I like how they don't just spray it on right off the bat with some exposition. This is this is really good setting up. Alright, I think we need to head back to the detention center. No, never mind. Where do we go? I should actually probably examine the crime scene. That's probably what I missed. Hey, Paulo, I bet I could get in and out of the train that way. That hole's big enough for me. What if our real killer did the same thing? I think our real killer would be the corpse here if that was the case. Maybe they were really good at, like, parkour or something. Please, nobody would be insane enough. We need to think insane, Paulo. We need to. Do we really? Well, it's more fun that way. <laughs> Oh, we can mess with the strap hanger now, can't we? I wouldn't if I were you. That thing can really swing all over the place if you're not careful. I know from, uh, experience. Oh, God. On one side, these seats are just as comfy as ever. On the other, there's a giant safety hazard nearby and tons of rubble. It's like some kind of weird metaphor. Life before and after that fateful day. Please don't. Oh, why can't I have a little fun? There's seats. That's it. How are you expecting to be a lawyer if you're so unimaginative? You need to come up with absurd theories and loopholes. This isn't about being imaginative. This is about preserving my sanity. I think we did that one in the in the first in in the first investigation, but still, <laughs> that one's funny. I think we investigated all we can. So where do I go? Where do I go? Where 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 do I go? Oh, hey, I forgot about this! Oh my god, I don't know why that slipped my mind. Detective Gumshoe, can you do us a favor? Sure, pal, what do you need? Can you take this to forensics? We want to get a check for a sleeping agent. Oh, is that Mr. Seasons? Good thinking, pal. Him passing out when he did was a little convenient. I'll get it to you before the trial tomorrow. Thanks a million, Gumshoe. No problem. I've just got to make sure not to confuse everyone's teacups when I get back to the prosecutor's office. Can he please not say things like that? Well, thanks for keeping us in the know, detective. Don't mention it. We better get going. Okay, so that was the last thing I had to do. Right, I shouldn't keep you guys hanging around here. Good luck. I'll see you in court tomorrow. Alright, let's get moving. I don't know where to go now, though. But maybe... Maybe we can see Pearl in detention now. Oh my god, don't head back the way I came. There we go. June 2nd, 3.11pm, crying train station. Well, I can't think of anything else we should take care of today. We've got some good clues, at least. If the forensics test turns up positive, and we show the 
record these. We can prove there was some kind of tampering involved. Y yeah, I just hope that's enough to lead us to what really happened. I trust this, and, and you too, but we can't lose this, okay? Of course, you made that plenty clear already. Besides, I think I might end up needing a favor from you guys when this is done. So I better not disappoint you, right? Oh yeah, that Godot guy, you're probably gonna get fired, huh? I'm pretty sure we already got fired. Well, but at least I know for sure you'll be giving it your all. I'm gonna go see Pearly now, okay? I, I need to talk to her. Of course. You just want to talk to her alone? Uh, yeah, thanks. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Oh, is that it for the investigation then? Later, Maya. Yep, that's it for the investigation. All right. We did get quite a bit of invest or we did get quite a bit of information this time. Uh, real quick, I'm going to save. Anyway, I'm going to end it off here. This is most likely going to be a shorter episode, but you know what? It's nice to have a shorter episode once in a while. And plus, a lot happened in this frame of time. So you know what? I had a lot of fun. And I hope you guys did too. Anyway, thank you each and every one of you for watching. You guys are amazing. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Kind of self-explanatory, is it? And if you really liked what you saw or if you think I'm really stupid and you want to see me fail more... Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button, because hitting that subscribe button is how I know that you guys want to keep seeing my stupidity. Because trust me, I got a lot of it. And plus, subscribing means you become a part of the Fudge Nugget Kingdom, which essentially makes you a Fudge Nugget. Fudge Nuggets live for a thousand years, so pretty much hitting the subscribe button adds like 900 years to your life. It's true. Proven fact. Don't believe me? Well, I mean, just hit it anyway. I mean, better to be safe than sorry, right? Who knows, it might work via placebo effect. Oh, and also don't forget to check out my Geometry Dash channel as well as my Twitch channel where I stream live. Thank you everyone, and I'll see each and every one of you in the next video. Bye! Peace!